Right, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV, as you probably expected. And today, we're going out to try, we're on double cam now, um, the Hobie 16 with the Hobie 14 Evo mainsail on there for a bit less power. But uh, already I reckon this sail is looking pretty juicy on this boat. Okie dokie. Jib travelers are good. Whoa, almost falling in. All right. So standard departure, going to the bow, grabbing the mooring line. Now gonna walk back. That's gonna help to bear us away. Just have to take, oh no, we've lost the mooring line. Okay, not to worry. We'll just reverse the rudders. I'll get forwards a bit. Worst thing you could do for your rudders is touching the bottom, going backwards, because uh, that in theory will just snap your rudder pins. Um, that's if you're using the aluminium rudder pins. If you're using the stainless ones, oh my goodness. Uh, you could actually um, do some serious damage if you're using the stainless rudder pins and you hit the bottom going backwards. So uh, let's not hit the bottom going backwards, shall we? Just for a start. Okay, so I'm riding with uh, the Hobie 14 Evo mainsail. I thought we'd take a jib today. We haven't had a jib for a bit. So um, see how fast she can go. I think the sail looks fantastic. I've added a strop to the uh, main sheet because otherwise we wouldn't have enough rope on the main sheet. That strop is perhaps a little bit long because it's really easy to get it block to block, but we'll go with it because we can't just spend all day tweaking. We've got to do some sailing. All right, so a bit of a gust on here. Whoa, the trapeze feels pretty long. I don't know why that is. Oh, it's because I took it apart. All right, it's gonna come in again. Whew. So, yeah, that's a little bit long for this wind because the wind isn't like on all the time. It's on and off. So I want it a little, I want the trapeze a little bit shorter so that I can stay out a bit more in the lulls. Out of pure laziness. Okay, so let's try that again. All right, so here we are. We're out. And we're good. All right, fantastico. Bit of a gust coming. Pretty shifty, gusty conditions this afternoon in Vasiliki Bay. It's this cloud. Um, Vasiliki Bay works perfectly under blue sky conditions. When it's a bit cloudy, it uh, can become a bit on the gusty side. First impressions, good. Um, it feels a bit more sensible than it did with the Easy Junior sail. Um, there's going to be a bit more power there and of course with the jib I think there is some potential for some speed because the jib is uh, a big part of providing that power for the speed. So we're just going for one burning lap although the wind isn't really letting us have that that burn but okay here we go just making sure we're hooked on as we go out very important especially while single-handed, to be hooked on as you go out. Go pull the traveler in a little bit for a bit more power. Good gust coming up. So I'm staying out on the trapeze during the lull, just because uh, these gusts are fairly short and I want to get the most out of it. Oh, there's a nice one coming. Top speed so far, 11.76. Okay, 
Here we are, close reaching. Wow, feels good. Feels fantastic, in fact. So well balanced. Because uh, the jib, uh, as a proportion or a percentage of our sail area, is pretty big. And uh, yeah, it's pulling. All right, I think we should go for the first send. I'm just going to ease the jib off a bit so that we can take it downwind. Nice juicy looking gust coming up and we're going to take it down the mine shaft, see what she's got as soon as that gust comes on. Sorry about the lulls by the way. I know the lulls don't make for great viewing. But, um, here we go, here it comes. Here it comes, here we go. I think, oh yeah. Yeah, there is a noticeable difference in the amount of power to the standard rig, but it feels so balanced. This is very nice, 17.3 knots there. All right, we'll just take this next gust and then uh, maybe we should turn around, try it on the other side. All right, here we go. Just eking forwards a little bit, put a bit more hull in the water. Bit of a gust there, what we got? Yeah, the wind is a little bit light. It's a good gust. It's coming on, just spotting the dark patch on the water. And there we go, getting the hull up, coming in towards the boat to encourage the hull to lift a bit more. Okay, nice gust there bearing away, sheeting out. This is going to be the top speed so far. That is absolutely toasty. Oh my goodness, that feels so good. Oh, if you've got a Hobie 14 and a 16, I think you know what to do. Um, okay, 20.7 knots. It's not bad. Right, I'm going to come up a bit and we're going to sail upwind a bit so that we can do that again on the other tack. So I've pulled the jib in, I've come forwards. Yeah, I have to say a big fan. Yeah, you can see how open the leech is on the mainsail. It's because that strop that I've put on is a little bit too long. So, in fact, we'll pull the traveller in pretty much central because we can't get the leech tension using the main sheet. So we've gone for more traveller. So we've got quite a lot of twist there, but we should be able to point reasonably well. Okay. Yeah, so the one thing I would say about putting your 14 main on your 16 is if it is an old 14 sail, putting it on the 16 is going to increase the chance of that sail ripping in half because the boat is heavier, you've got more leverage against the sail which means the sail is holding more pressure. So the sail is going to be under more load. Um, so if your, sail, if your 14 sail is quite old, then um, only try it if you're ready to put your sail in the bin, uh, because it could, it could happen. All right, the next question is, are we going to be able to tack with this small amount of leech tension? Uh, I'm thinking it's, I'm thinking we're going to try, but the answer is probably going to be uh, not very nicely. All right, let's go for it. Okay, I'm just going to rotate him a bit and sheet is tight. I'm going to come in first, try to give it as much good technique as possible, keeping the main sheet absolutely cranked. Yes, we've done it. Jib's backed. That's all we needed. I think if we didn't have a jib, that would have... Uh, not been successful but well done for having a jib okay and of course this jib traveler has to stay out because of crazy pole cam um, all right I think we'll keep going upwind a bit more so we've got more space for the send giving it the beans on a Monday afternoon in Vasiliki Bay still no customers here but um, 
I think it's important to get this testing done before they come out. Very important, really taking one for the team here. But it does feel very good indeed. I'm really impressed. In fact, I'm gonna get some more of these. It's really good. Okay, I don't think we'll go any further up. So I'm just gonna ease the jib off a bit. Ease a little bit more this time because the traveler's in. Just gonna knock the main traveler off a bit. Yeah, there's a common problem if your traveler isn't going out, it might be because you've got too much tension in your main sheet and that's just kind of jamming it. Um, don't wanna jam it. Okay. Okay, for those of you who have noticed, yes, I'm on the trapeze and I should have come into the boat. But again, I just wanting to get the most out of all of these little puffs. A little bit more jib. Let's tease him in. Okay. There is more wind coming. Don't worry if you're thinking of turning this off because there's no wind. Keep it on because the wind is coming and it's coming pretty soon. And I'm going to go full send on this one. Okay, off we go down the mine shaft. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. All right. So I'm just using the steering to keep her in the sweet spot. If we get more wind, I'll just sheet out turn downwind a bit more, we get less wind. I'm just coming up a little bit just to keep the power on and to keep her in that sweet spot. Okay, bit of a lull there. I had to use a special technique in fact. If you're going fast and you go into a big lull, you'll get the feeling like you're getting sent flung forwards. So I just hooked my toes under the tiller arm Zero, Colorado's doing an absolutely great job as ever. I really didn't expect them to be this good on the boat, but I'd say for warm water conditions, some of the best sailing shoes I've had, as long as you don't need complete protection for your toes. Um, I think if it was cold water conditions, you'd really be better off with a pair of uh, high ankle five mil uh, proper sailing boots. All right, gonna start coming back up a little bit here. So as we come up, moving forwards, keep the bows down, flying the hull. Oh yeah. Everyone knows that five apes of catamaran sailing is about flying the hull. If you've got a catamaran and you haven't had a fun time yet with flying the hull, it's probably about time. Um, check out the how to fly a hull video because flying the hull is really fun and it looks cool. You get the chicks, um, you get to dry off your windward hull and rudder. It's good for control, it's good for everything. All right. I'm gonna go for another send here, maybe. I think the wind is gonna go a bit light, but maybe we've got one more chance. Let's take that chance. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Putting the pole cam almost underwater. Getting forwards a bit. Good pace there, I think. Oh, and there is the B-Day to finish. Okay. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how that... Well, hopefully I had the GPS turned on on the uh, head cam so we'd get the speedo in the corner. So that felt pretty quick. Yeah, so there we go. Another positive result from a sail choice experiment on the Hobie 16. So versatile. Um, I would say this one is better than the Easy Junior. So a Hobie 14 mainsail 
is going to help you send it in more wind, especially if you're single-handed, um, especially if you've got a fairly good Hobie 14 sail. Of course, the other option would be um, you could take an old Hobie 16 sail, get a sail maker to cut it at the reefing point, and you'll be left with something fairly similar. That'd be a good choice as well. Oh, let's see how fast we can go sitting in. All right, no trapeze necessary. Here we go. Maybe the gust isn't gonna provide us with any great action here, but uh, we'll try. Okay, coming in and coming in. And uh, yeah, no great action there provided by that small gust. So letting the main sheet out, letting the jib out, letting the downhaul off so that when we finish, the sail will just hang like a flag.com. Um, all right, and I'll just get her on the mooring then. We'll look at the stats on the Locosis GW60. So overshooting the mark deliberately so that we can drift back onto it. Oh no, just missed it. Meaning we have to jump in. Small price to pay for a really good time on the Hobie 16 slash 14 um, as this model is now going to be known. All right, just tying her up. Then we'll have a look at the stats. Don't forget the stats. All right, can we see this? Is that, is that right? Did we go that fast? Yes, we did. Okay, so top speed, 20.68. For two seconds, 20.38. And over 100 meters, 19.83. I think we can say for a Monday afternoon, little spin out in the bay. That was cooking. Um, I think we're gonna see some great things from this combination in the coming months. And uh, if you decide that you're going to put a 14 sail on your 16, don't blame me if you rip the sail in half. But um, I want to know how fast you, you get it to go, because that was good. I think it would be equally good with two people as well. Of course, you're going to need a bit more wind for that. Okay, so it's been Joe for Joyrider TV with uh, Hobie 16 slash 14. Uh, we'll do it again in more wind, of course. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone for supporting the channel. There's new tiers on Patreon, so check out Patreon and get involved there. There's new t-shirts at totaljoyrider.com, so check that out too. But we'll see you next time for some more on Joyrider.